Welcome to ECE Elimu, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have discussed rectilinear propagation of light, and now we are moving to the second part of this topic. Remember, our title of the topic was rectilinear propagation of light and reflection on plane surfaces. Since we have discussed rectilinear propagation of light, and we have proved that light travels in a straight line. Now we are going to discuss how the light which travels in a straight line can be changed direction by a plane surface in a process we call reflection. And here we are going to answer a question like, how do we see? And what we are going to realize, we can only see an object when light from that object is reflected into our eyes. My name is Albert. I hope you are enjoying the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain what the reflection of light is, then explain the various types of reflection, and then finally explain how we can obtain a plane mirror from a transparent glass. So what exactly is reflection of light? Reflection of light is the bouncing off of light when it hits a reflecting surface. So one of the major reflecting surfaces which we are going to consider in this lesson is a plane mirror. And when light comes or interacts with a plane mirror, its direction will change in which we will say it will be reflected and we are going to see how it will be reflected and how different materials reflect light. So another important bit that you need to know here is that all objects, all objects right from you, your pen, your book, your handwriting, the whiteboard, even this screen that you are using, you are only able to see it because it bounces light into your eyes. If the materials that you see that cannot bounce or reflect light to your eyes, you will not be able to see them. Then here we can answer a question. How do we see? We can only see if this is the object and then this is your eye here. The reason why we see is because light from the object, let's say like we have the sun here, light from the sun comes to the object and then the object now will reflect light into your eyes. So now when this object reflect light into your eyes, that is the only way you can be able to see this object. So we can see an object after it has reflected light into our eyes. So if the object has not reflected light to our eyes, then it means we cannot be able to see that object. And I want to give a good example here. Let's say you have a wall here. You have just a wall. This is a wall. And then your eye is here. This is your eye. Eye. And then there is a person standing here. There is a person standing there. But this is a continuous wall. Are you able to see that person? You cannot be able to see someone who is behind the wall, even if. The outside here there is light and then here there is light now the reason why you can't see that person who is behind the wall is because when light tries to travel in a straight line remember we said light travels in a straight line when this light tries to travel in a straight line from this person it will get a wall and this light will get uh, blocked by this wall but now, since light cannot travel along corners, then this person cannot receive this rays of light. But if this light could have made the corners, then it means it will come here, find a wall, and then it will climb up and then come back into our eyes. Now, but since light cannot do that, then it means for us to see an object, light must be traveling in a straight line directly from the object to our eyes. And if light cannot uh, it's not has not reached our eyes, then it means we cannot be able to see an object. 
So we only see objects when light from them reaches our eyes. Now we have uh, two types of reflection and the first type of reflection is called regular reflection and then the other one is called irregular or diffuse reflection. So regular reflection occurs when parallel incident rays are reflected parallel to each other and when reflecting surface is smooth. So for you to have um, regular reflection, the rays from the source, let's say this is the source here, which is the sun. Now the rays which will be produced should be regular, all parallel to each other. It means they should never meet. This one is parallel to this one and it's also parallel to this one. Now when they meet a smooth surface, a smooth surface, they will bounce back parallel to each other and they should never or they will never meet. The distance between them will still be maintained. So for you to say that you now you have a regular reflection, the parallel rays must be moving from the source to the smooth surface and when they hit the smooth surface, they will be reflected uh, back and they should be uh, parallel to each other. So in this case, we say we have a regular or spe spectral reflection. So the second type of reflection we have is irregular or diffuse reflection. And for regular or diffuse reflection, the parallel rays from the source, which is in this case the sun, are reflected in different direction for a rough surface. So when we have parallel rays, look at this, the distance between them is equal and uniform. When they hit now a rough surface, th their direction will change as you can see here. Even now the distance between them is not uniform. Below here it's very short and then as you move out it's spreading out. These rays can even move air back like this one. You can have a ray parallel like this and then when it hits this surface it can even uh, cut the other rays like that. So in this case this uh, reflection where rays diffuse all move away from each other and they change or move in different directions with different orientations we call it irregular reflection of light. Now since we have discussed the two main types of reflection, that is regular and irregular reflection, it's important for us to note that the main part of this topic, we will focus majorly on regular reflection. And for regular reflection, we said it's only produced when a parallel beam hits a reflecting surface which is smooth. So now, it's also our responsibility to identify or to find out how we can make a material which can reflect light in a regular reflection. And the material which we can make is a plane mirror. And for you to make a plane mirror, you will take um, a glass or a transparent glass like this one here. If you take a transparent glass like this one, like that, then on one side of this transparent glass, then you paint, you paint with a silver a metal or a metal which is shiny or a metal which is silverly. So you will paint here with a silverly metal. This is a silverly metal. Then after you have silvered using a, a this metal, now you will have your glass covered by silver on one side. The reason why we use a silver is because silver is shiny and when it is shiny and the glass is smooth, then it's going to reflect maximum light. Then after you have silvered, then you have to protect this silver from fading off. And now what you do, you will take any paint, you will take any paint and paint this glass will take paint and paint this uh, a part where we have uh, painted with silver. So you will take the same same glass 
which you have uh, painted with silver to make it shiny on this surface. This is the surface which you had painted with silver. Then now you will bring another material or another paint now, which is uh, uh, which will protect this layer of silver from fading off. Now in this case, you will have your protective layer. Now the, the, the paint that you, you bring will be the protective layer of paint. And then in here, before we had put this layer, we had silver, we had a, a silver surface or a shiny surface. And then in the front now, in front of this mirror now, it now this one will become a mirror. So in front here, that's where we will have a reflecting, reflecting surface. So in this case, you could have made your surface which can produce regular reflection. You take the you take a clear glass or a transparent glass, you apply silver paint on one side. The reason why we use silver is because silver is shiny and it reflects light. Then after applying your silver, then you paint using a, 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 a paint to protect the silver from fading off. And in that case, then it, the, the other side of the mirror now will be reflecting uh, regularly. Remember, glass is a smooth surface. It's going to produce regular reflection. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will talk about the laws of reflection.